Hello everyone, welcome to a new Process Mining Cafe. And uh, today I'm joined by uh, Leonard Stude from this, uh, the city of Lausanne. Hi Leonard. Hi Anne. Hi everybody. <laughs> As always, um, we also want to talk to you during the cafe. So just below this video, uh, you can um, just in type in your name and you can enter the chat. That's uh, right here on the website and you can add your comments or any questions and we will try to pick them up um, during the session as well. Okay, Leonard, thanks so much for, for joining here today. You're one of the people who has been working with process mining for a long time already. Uh, you're a business process uh, consultant, uh, business process management consultant at the city of Lausanne. Uh, you're also teaching business informatics once a year. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious um, yeah, whether you could tell us a little bit uh, about yourself and also how process mining helps you in your work at the city. Okay, anyway. so uh, this is a long journey. Uh, my, my background is in science. I'm a physicist by formation and uh, uh, maybe 10 years ago, something like this, I entered the city of Lausanne. This is an administrative uh, professional uh, um, uh, work. And uh, I, I had the first job is was to cartography some uh, processes. And uh, uh, it was a very big job for the city of Lausanne. And I made some plan that it, it requested uh, maybe uh, seven people for three years or something like this. And uh, the big boss was not okay with that. So I go back to my scientist background and I say, okay, I want to do some kind of data mining on process. I put it on Google and Voila, this is process mining that started for me. And uh, I understood that it was okay. And we we started uh, soon in Lausanne to, to use process mining. And uh, we made uh, some some good project on it. Uh, and it was very interesting. Uh, what is also uh, maybe interesting for uh, the audience is, is that nothing was prepared to do some process mining in the city of Lausanne. Uh, I have to find my way, find the, the, the paths to, to get the data and, uh, and to try to start to analyze some processes, some administrative processes. And maybe the topic of today is how to find some data. Exactly, yes. Um, that was one of the reasons why we said, well, it would be really nice to have you here in the Prosmanin Cafe, because I saw that you had some, some creative ideas how to make data usable or find data when there wasn't any data. So I know this is a common challenge for other people as well. So yeah, we, we wanted to see whether we can give them some ideas about what they could do in their own work if they, if they have problems mm -hmm. finding any data. So you, you brought three examples um, with us today, right? Um, what's the first example? Uh, the first example, so it, it was a project that uh, was running about uh, five, six years ago. Um, in the city of Lausanne, there is a, 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 a big process that is about uh, the permission to build uh, houses or, or buildings, any buildings in the city. You have laws on it and you have to check a lot of things. And this is a, a very big process. And uh, the manager uh, in charge of this process uh, asked us, uh, could you explain me why this process is so long? Because it was, it was long, it's still long, by the way. And um, uh, he asked us to, to look for that. And uh, we say, okay, yes, we can go. And um, my colleague and I were uh, keen to, to, to make a good job by a classical way. It means uh, uh, interviewing people and studying the documentation and uh, looking to some cases and, uh, and try to make some, uh, some analysis on this. This is a very classical way for a, a business analyst or a business consultant. And uh, you have every time the same problem with this kind of way. Uh, it's very funny. It's very interesting. Uh, it can be a little bit stressful for people that are interviewed. And uh, because of that, people uh, uh, have difficulties to tell you the, the whole truth. Sometimes yeah. they forget things. Sometimes they... They, uh, they elude some things, they, they try to, to cancel, to, to hide a few, a few facts because they are not sure it's a, a good thing to do or not and things like this. And this is a very classical way. We know how to deal with it. And, and 
in the same times that we were starting with process mining, we say so, but we could compare what they are saying and what we can get with uh, process mining. So we, we decided to, to go with process mining. And uh, we say, okay, so we know that we have some data in a kind of ERP, and um, can we get out the data? So it was a little bit a challenge for that. Uh, I have good colleagues that uh, that goes to the in the database uh, and recorded the log, and uh, they they make some nice uh, SQL uh, scripts uh, that I was unable to write, but uh, um, they 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 were able to get out some data, and uh, we get we get uh, two. Two tables, two logs, two different logs. Uh, a first log uh, was basically um, uh, records of, of free text. People were were just writing what, what they were doing on the cases uh, in in the free text. And uh, in the first attempt, I tried to to text mine, so to, to data mine on the on the free text to get the good information. Uh, I knew the cases, I knew the time, but I had, I had no idea of the activities. So from the free text, I tried to infer the activities. And it was very funny to do with uh, some um, uh, free tools that you can get on the on the internet. It was open refine. So you have some somewhere on the internet open refine.org. You can you can try. It's very handy. It's very useful. Uh, just by doing that, you learn a lot on your data. And ju just the process to 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 try to get data is is already uh, uh, starting the analysis. You already get uh, very relevant information uh, for your project. But uh, in the end, uh, I explained in, um, in uh, once. In the end, it it. it we finished nowhere. It was very a daunting task, and it was impossible to do it in, in three or four weeks because we have uh, uh, not so much time. So I turned to another data sets, and uh, uh, you have a, an example maybe to show for the other data sets. That is data extracted also uh, from the same, same uh, ERP, and basically it was the data that said the, the files, all the files have been sent from this office to another office. And let's, let's take a here, look. So that's the same ERP, just to yes, that's, that, that's the same ERP. So you, it's 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 not a very nice ERP. It's a little bit ugly in the, in 2021 standards, but uh, anyhow, it's still in use and people love it, so they, they are using it. And so you see um, the kind of data that we get in this uh, ERP, and you see the the, the central column that is uh, surrounded by uh, um, a red rectangle. This is basically the information that say. Uh, 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 people were using email uh, in, in conjunction with this ERP and uh, in the email they say please find here the cases number XXX and please do something on it okay uh, but the, the, the it was also free text but this time here is a, a clear example you can see in French is at OPC uh, pour nouvelle analyse matériel. You can translate it in English to the office name OPC slash H and to the office OPC slash T to substantively uh, reanalyze. So people receive the, the file and they have to reanalyze the file and uh, in, in the, in the uh, 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 it's a deep analysis for them. And and so this is a kind of information, and you can see that this information is built of uh, 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 three, two, two or three main blocks. The, the, uh, we can see two blocks here, two offices and two offices. There are two offices, though, so it, this is the block of the destination, if you want. We know in the same line, this is a blurb for a confidentiality reason, but in the, in the last column, this is the, the origin of the of of the of the action, uh, it's named destinataire, and, and in French, why well, it's not uh, it's not the origin, it's the, it's, it's the office. But anyhow, this is a second part of the the information, and the last part of the information is to substantively reanalyze. This is the activity, in fact, and people um, with the ERP could build this activity with a free free right, free here three different uh, subcolon if you want and uh, uh, they just pull uh, something from a first subcolon pull another part of the text for the second subcolon and pull the third part and so 
uh, it, it can make um, uh, as they were in the submenu they were maybe uh, 10 to 20 different uh, possibilities the the combinatory can be quite high but anyhow we can chunk it and make it uh, this in in activities that is uh, more atomic and more uh, systematic yeah so it's 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 a little bit of a different situation to the other field you were looking in at in the same ERP right so what you told before is that there was a, a completely free text yeah. field <laughs> that you were looking at before and i remember also from um from your cross mining camp presentation in 2015 you were talking a little a little bit about this this uh, first attempt of doing the really the mm -hmm. free text uh, mining and i remember something like you started from 50000 different activity names due to the free text um, which gives many different combinations of course and mm -hmm. after applying the the text mining it was still maybe 40000 or 30000 or well, too yeah, much yeah, in any case yeah yes it, it was uh Uh, the, the, the numbers are were around 50,000 at the at the origin, and uh, I was able to reduce to to 40 or 30,000. But you cannot analyze the process with so-called 30,000 different activities. It, it it's it's no sense. It, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, and uh, this, this is the problem, and and um, maybe also the power of free text. People can can write it things as they want. Yeah. Maybe maybe I was not. Not, um, uh, able enough with text mining, but uh, uh, you know that uh, there are so many ways to write a text that it's very difficult to, to have something more uh, more specific. This is why we have to turn this to this second colon. This second colon uh, is, is less uh, informative on the process than the first one because here you ju you just have the. I, I want to say you just have the address on the envelope and the main content on, of the of the envelope, something like this. You, mm -hmm. you, this is not the detail of the activities, and you don't know uh, uh, exactly uh, which people are doing what and uh, how how long it takes and things like this. It's it just the 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 go and back from one office to the other to a third one and things like this. So, mm -hmm. so it. it You, you, when, when the first time I used the, the second table of of, uh, of information of information of data, uh, I was a little bit suspicious. I, I, I was not sure that I, I will get uh, something uh, interesting for for the analysis of the process, which is the main goal. I have to analyze the process. But as I already told before, just the work on this data table is already giving you information of your process. Just when you have to, to, to work hard to make it data useful for process mining, maybe you will not do real process mining, but just the process to work, to study your data is already uh, giving you some information. So this is, it was a first good lesson for, for this project for me, is that uh, ju just to, to, to put your nose in the data is already something uh, interesting for, uh, yeah. for the final result. And so you, so would you, yeah. sorry. So before we go on, so would you uh, would you recommend to people to try text mining if they have complete free text data? Although um, ultimately you still couldn't use it, so you would still recommend yeah. people that they make the attempt. Yeah. Yes. This is uh, as as you are the analyst of a of a business process that probably you don't know very well because you are probably not involved in this process. This is the typical situation of the of the process miner. Usually it's something external to the business process that uh, that comes to help to analyze the process. Uh, so just by trying to 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 clean the data, to wrangle with the data, I mean, so just just by the, this uh, process, just by doing text mining on free text, you are learning a lot of things on the process. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. so you, you raise your, your abilities and your competencies and your knowledge on yeah. the process. So this is, this is at least this is useful. Of course, uh, you should have time to do that because uh, uh, n well, now we have six years later, uh, text mining, uh, Uh, tools are, are uh, more easy to manage and things like this. Uh, probably they are more powerful, so uh, you can reach better results uh, and sooner. But uh, anyhow, it's very hard task. Uh, but it, it is worth doing it if you have mm -hmm. time to do it. Yeah. 
yeah we will add the link together with the recording we always also share the links to any pointers that we discussed during the session so i'll make sure i also include a link to the to the open refine tool that you were using for for this um preparation okay. of the free text yes so so yeah did you also use the the open refine on the second column or did you use something else here um, yeah, I, I use open refine during a time because uh, 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 even it, if the the this second column is built from three sub menu, uh, it remains a free text, uh, so it has to be cleaned up for uh, some uh, some uh, variations that are um, that, that, that make no sense. So in the first time, we I use open refine to clean up a little bit the column, and next I use. Uh, uh, some Python scripts just to chunk the, the part in three parts. So, uh, but it, it's, it, you can use anything, even Excel, you can use it for the, for the second part. It's just, uh, for me, it was easier to do it with uh, Python scripts. So it was just to, to chunk the, 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 the records in, in the three parts that I've identified before. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Okay. And so which part did you then use as the activity name? Because that's the problem that the circulation column itself yeah. is too detailed, even though it's kind of semi-structured and not completely full free text. It's too um, detailed to use as it is as an activity name. So you break it up into these three components. We have a second yeah. example here for another one. Yeah. But so which one did you then use? as the activity name. So uh, I, I use as the activity name what you see here that is written formal and substantive analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking for the keywords, so I knew that uh, see, this was with discussion with the people from the business. I knew that they, they made uh, difference, uh, the differences, substantive analysis from uh, a formal analysis. So for them, it's two different activities. So formal and substantive analysis means Means that they request the, the recipient of the of the emails to do the, the two activities. So I recorded two activities for this uh, for this line in, the, in this case, and uh, they, they are they, they were other um, uh, text like uh, for your information, for example, or uh, to archive in, in your area or something like this. So uh, I have a few keywords that uh, I could relate it to some uh, key activities. And so I could infer uh, substantive analysis means that they have to, to, to make a deep analysis on the files and uh, it will take time. And uh, for me, it was interesting to record it as, as such. Substantive analysis was an activity by itself. Yeah. So and uh, uh, when when I, I did this i did this so uh, I, I have the, the uh, a process uh, or exactly i have a csv file that i can input in pro in disco and tada disco give me back a process and what was interesting is that the process i get out of disco was not here it is this process on the on the right side uh, should be the same that the process on the left side. The process on the left side was the process we uh, built by interviewing people. So we interview uh, a lot of people on this process, and you can see that uh, by interview we have uh, much more activities or much more detailed activities. So the first question was that. Uh, did we get something uh, useful out of Disco or meaningful out of Disco? And by all the work we did before, we knew that uh, uh, the, the, the process map out of Disco uh, will be different from the process map out of interview. We knew that. Uh, but we can make a translation from the left part to the right side to the right uh, part, right side part, and back. And for example, you can see on the left side, you can see some uh, uh, colored rectangles, uh, uh, a green one, a red one, a blue one, yellow one, a green one, if I'm right. And basically, these rectangles are, uh, in, in, uh, are the same uh, step that you can see with the, the red crosses on the right side. So the, the red crosses are in, in, in correlation with this uh, with the main step that you can imagine on the on the on the left part. 
And so we can see that we have uh, one, two, three, five, five, six uh, red crosses, and um, uh, these were the main steps or the main phases of the, of the process. And uh, uh, so this was very uh, useful for, for us, and we were expecting only these uh, six um, uh, red crosses. And uh, the, the surprise was that there were a lot of other activities out of this core. You can see all the, the blue blocks, the light blue blocks that are around these, uh, the, the blue box with uh, red crosses, all the extra blue box. And these are all the extra activities that, are, that were not mentioned when we interview people, mm -hmm. but that we could infer from the, from the data table. Yeah. And uh, typically, this is the, this is the, the step uh, uh, where people say, in the same times for your information and for a reanalysis, for example, or uh, uh, for a decision and uh, to archive and things like this, or, or, or uh, for a reconsideration of your decision, or, th <laughs> or, or things like this. So these are these are way. This is, it was very uh, interesting for us. To, uh, to show that their process, their ideal process, if you want uh, what is on the left part, uh, uh, was much richer in reality with uh, other extra steps. I, I would say some parasitic step, uh, steps, but it, it, it's not parasitic, in, 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 but it's not well-defined uh, steps. And, uh, it was a, a, a aha moment for people in the in the business and for me also. It, it was very uh, insightful. That's such a nice example because that's what we see with process mining, of course, right? That you really look at the real process, and if you ask people to tell about the process, how they think it works, usually you you forget about these exceptions. You tell maybe the the normal process if everything goes well, but the rework or the the things that happen in reality they are then often not covered. So it sounds a little bit like these are kind of these additional steps that emerged yeah. through your data analysis. Yeah. But, but, the, but the, the analysis is not fi not yet finished at these steps. So the, the first thing, maybe maybe a, 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 another good lesson from this project for me was that uh, for people when they are interviewed, it's really difficult for them to tell you the whole truth uh, and only the truth and uh, and to be objective about that uh, I, I don't blame the people uh, uh, probably in the in the same situation i would be uh, um, uh, also uh, not perfect in, in in telling how the the process i work on is really going this is normal this is uh, i would say a psychological trend of uh, we are human and we are not perfect and so that, that's life but it was a, a good first, a good second lesson because we already had a first lesson before. And uh, the, the, the other things is that now we have to, to give some meanings of these uh, extra parasitic steps. And uh, uh, we had this uh, this process out of this core. It, it is not the same uh, as the process out of the interview. But can we explain why the people are doing all these extra parasitic steps? So. This is real analysis, real thinking about this. And as I told you before, the, 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 the data that we were using to get this, this process is basically the data that say the, the, the files are sent to another office for uh, an activities and, and the other office uh, send back the files and uh, the files will go next to a, a third office, I think like this. Right. And, uh, and basically this, this go and back um, is is basically uh, something like questions and re and answers, mm -hmm. and so be, be, uh, so uh, you have a, a meta model now of the business process. That is the meta model is that we are in a, pro in a in a process that is just question and answers, and uh, so you now think about what can go wrong or right in the system of question and answers, and this is not very really difficult. You just ask the wrong thing the wrong thing or you are not specific enough when you are asking something to people so mm -hmm. it, it's the first problem of the process uh, bad questions if you want and uh, the, the answers can be delayed uh, can be never returned or uh, can be uh, 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 they are answering the wrong the wrong questions yeah, what mm -hmm. they are giving you and so 
uh, by thinking that, uh, it, it gave me the idea to revisit the activities and not now to say that uh, it's just uh, substantive analysis or uh, for your decision or for your information, but it was a little bit more. And uh, typically when the, the, the record was uh, for, your info for your information and for uh, your decision, I said it was an ambiguous question. I said mm -hmm. they, they, are, they are asking two things to the people. Imagine you receive these questions, you, you, you just start to say, so I have to give an, a decision, but I have to archive in the same time. I have to do one thing and uh, another thing. So I don't know exactly what I have to do. This is a, a little bit ambiguous. Mm -hmm. This is, so uh, I, I, I was able now to, to put a new uh, a new column on the on the data table that I input to in Disco and just say this is ambiguous or non ambiguous questions. This is the first thing, and uh, of course I will use this this column to next filter the data and to reanalyze the process with Disco. This is the first thing, and the second thing is the, uh, is the answer is the answer coming back in a decent time. Or is it, or, or are the people not answering, or, uh, or can we observe some kind of uh, answer, but the same question again and this, and uh, a different answer? It means that they they gave a, a wrong answer first, or something like this. So, uh, the the second topics was uh, uh, the, the the questions that were. Uh, that were not answered in due time. And this is why I separated the, or filtered the process. And you can see in this schema, we have, uh, if you look to the, to the, to the colon, we have, uh, we call it circulations, this system of questions and answers. And this, the, 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 the file are circulating between uh, offices. And we say that we can have uh, circulation that are ambiguous and uh, circulation that are not ambiguous. These are the two columns. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we have circulation that are clearly answered. That are, we, it is uh, with uh, answered circulation and circulation that are not answered or badly answered. So we have the, 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 the crossing of these conditions and I can filter the data, and uh, tada! Uh, I, I see on the on the left, on the right side, in the bottom part, I can see the the, the cases that were non-ambiguous and uh, answered in due time. Answered uh, uh, in due times, and it, it takes let's say 15 weeks, maybe for the whole process. And uh, but. As soon as there is one of the circulation, because there are a lot of circulation for one cases, as soon as there are one ambiguous circulation, the process lags two weeks more. And this is the, the and the, this is this is the, the process uh, you can see on the top uh, right side uh, behind, and uh, on the top left side, this is the, the process where at least one circulation has been ambiguous, uh, uh, ambiguous questions. And at least one of uh, circulation has received a, a bad answer or has not received an answer. And so you can see that the, the process itself uh, lags uh, 14 weeks between uh, with the ideal cases. So you, you, you see, for starting from a free text, we have been able to reconstruct something that is meaningful. And we have even been able to pinpoint in the data the problem itself that 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 was the problem itself was ambiguity and uh, non-answered uh, 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 questions, and uh, with that, but we were able to objectively say in which conditions the, the process will will uh, take too much time, and uh, even if you look to the the, the the four different cases, the four different processes, you can see that in the in the L cases the process is quite simple. But in the in the worst cases on the top left, the the process already looked uh, more complex, and uh, so this is this is a, a first example. And uh, I, I would say that for me in my process mining journey, it was a very very uh, 
a meaningful example and full information and full of lessons. Yeah. It's really nice to see how from the yeah, unusable data you make these steps and then also it, it seems to be really a combination of understanding the data, building the, on the data understanding by looking at it even, yeah, for example, with text mining and other means and then through this semi-structured column to yeah, break it down into yeah, a directly usable process map, but then still using those insights from, uh, from, from the previous analysis to make this distinction on mm -hmm. really the process level, right? What could be behind certain delays and things mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, really nice to see. I'm also curious what you said before, um, when you talked about the, the regular way of documenting a process, when you interview people and ask them how it works and do this in the manual way, way you said that people are maybe a little bit shy or reluctant to tell the true story. Maybe they don't remember also, but um, especially this kind of being a little bit wary, uh, not knowing what maybe happens uh, with those insights. That's one thing if you are interviewed and asked about it. But um, yeah, what was your experience when using process mining with them? Because process mining, in one yeah, in, in one moment, makes the process totally transparent. So, how did people react to that? Yeah. So uh, 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 I have uh, um, my understanding or, 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 or my practice uh, of presenting the, the process through process mining to, to business people has evolved with time. In the beginning, I, I put it straight in front of their face and usually it was, <gasps> oh, and things like this. It was a little bit uh, stressful for them. And with time, uh, I introduce, um, uh, I call it a chart. Uh, I make uh, some kind of ethical contract. I, 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 I pass with them and with their bosses. Uh, where I, I, I write at least uh, three, three things. First, the, the, the goal of the, the study, I said, I said the goal of the study is to analyze the process and not the people. I refuse to analyze the people itself, the work of people. This is not my job. I am there to analyze the process, how the process uh, behave. This is the first thing. The second thing is, is that uh, I will have uh, a privileged moment with uh, people of the process uh, that will be just face to face. I mean that the boss will know that we will meet, but he, he will not know what we change during this uh, this. Uh, little interviews so people can uh, it's a little bit like uh, uh, a press in a confessional I mean uh, they, they can speak more freely about that it's, yeah. it's more uh, more easy this is the second thing and the last thing is that the, the results of the of the of the whole study will be given uh, transparently to everybody Uh, and uh, uh, name will be discarded and things like this. So, uh, and, uh, and now I, 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 I want that the, the people interviewed, the boss and myself, we sign all together this, this charts. And uh, I, I see that it helps a lot of people because we, we, we write down the, the, uh, the rules of the game and it makes easy, it makes people really more easy to, uh, To, to work on this and this is one the first thing the second thing is that usually i do it in an iterative way i mean that the the, the 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 first day i will do some process mining with business people i will see only gross feature of the process so um, uh, it will help them to understand uh, a little bit what the tool can do what kind of information i can get this uh, this way And uh, ne uh, the, the, the next session of process mining, usually I do uh, 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 sessions of one or two hours with uh, three to five people of the, of the business uh, side. Um, uh, I, for my experiments, if, uh, experience, if you go more than, let's say, two hours, usually people have no time for that. Mm -hmm. And they are really, uh, it's really heavy for them. Uh, so uh, it, it's, it makes no sense to be uh, To, to, uh, to ask too much uh, uh, in the first time. So let's imagine uh, next week I, I ask people for a, a, new, uh, a new interactive session. And uh, this time I go a little bit deeper in the process. We examine a little bit deeper some part of the process. And uh, usually 
uh, I, I've looked uh, beforehand the, the part of the process and there are things that I cannot understand. So I asked them, please give me a, a, an explanation. What does it mean? I can un understand what's this uh, uh, and things like this. And it makes people speak about their, their, their process and it, we start the dialogue this way. And uh, usually it goes well. People start to speak about their process and this is what I say usually is that uh, disco is not only an algorithm to get the data out of the of, of your logs. It's also a tool that help people speak. It's uh, the interactive feature of, of of disco is very useful to as a tool as a, as a magic wand if you want to let people speak about their process. They speak freely and they give you information. And of course, all this information you get something sometimes is just they say something interesting, so you just write these things interesting, and sometimes you get objective uh, facts out of the data itself. So it's a mix of, of both things. Mm -hmm. And when I, I teach them to, to, to students, I, I, I speak about the method, I say to, to people, um, you, you, you will get the, this interactive moment with the people, and what uh, there are very two things that are very important for you at, the, at that time. First, you just shut up, you let people speak, it's not you to speak. Huh? Mm -hmm. This is the first thing. And, and the second thing is that look to the people. Look how they feel. Maybe they are a little bit uh, astonished. Maybe they are a little bit angry. Uh, maybe they are uh, uh, a little bit, uh, well, things like this. And all these little emotional moments are also information that you can collect and that can help you to analyze the process. So this is... This is uh, process mining is really much more than, than an algorithm. is uh, is really a, uh, a tool in the in the in, in the dialogue you try to get with business people. Yeah, yeah, these are very good recommendations. So having the right uh, framework and putting people at ease, making clear what the goals are for the analysis, so, and building trust in these steps that you described, but then. There's a lot of opportunity to together mm -hmm. with the data and this actual domain knowledge to really get to the to the truth mm -hmm. of the process and yeah, work with right. them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Really, really good. So yeah, the, this yeah, looking at the, the the three examples that you you brought and um, yeah, finding ways to analyze the process. I think this first example that we just discussed. The data is there, maybe even in a traditional system, this ERP system that was used, um, and you looked at different fields, and the data was had some quality problems, right? Uh, and you had to do things and data preparation steps to to get the data out, and um, ultimately you were able to do this and analyze it um, very well. So. I understand that there's a second example that we mm -hmm. want to share here today as well, where you want to analyze a process, but then there's no ERP, right? There's no system no. that can be used. No. What was the situation? Uh, the situation here was that uh, Opera of Lausanne, so uh, Opera of Lausanne, they, they make opera show, the uh, big show, uh, classical music. And uh, uh, basically, um, they wanted to reorganize a little bit their internal process uh, and um, the, the idea was to, to try to, to make it the, the, the internal process a little bit more fluid and uh, more easy to go. And um, uh, when you go to in, a, in a opera, you have basically three kinds of of, uh, of duties inside the opera. Of course, you have the artistical side with musicians and singers. And uh, uh, this is a part of the work in opera. You can usually you go to the opera to see uh, singers and musicians. Uh, you have a second part that is the technical part uh, to, to prepare the scene, to uh, the, the clothes for the singers and uh, and the decorum and, and things like this. So you have a lot of technical people that uh, that build all this stuff. This is the second part, and uh, the third part is the administrative people, uh, just to 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 make the. the the, the, to, to manage the opera in the, in, the, in the usual sense, you have to to issue contracts, you have to uh, to, to book the seats, you have to to request uh, things and things like this, to to just answer the, the, the phones and things like this. And all these people in Lausanne, the opera of Lausanne is maybe 40 people or 50 people, something like this. All these people are using computers. 
uh, a lot or not a lot depends and um, they, they are sharing documents and uh, so uh, here uh, uh, I, I get the idea that maybe I can try to understand how they were working together so I can speak with people and I spoke with people and I can understand how they work but I can also get another kind of information just by looking how they access and how they use the documents. The documents were stored in the network attached storage, NAS and uh, uh, in this NAS uh, we have uh, a software agent that just record the access to the, to the documents, to the files and uh, uh, the idea here was that to catch this information the logs of the access to the files and to give sense to, to, to these logs. Yeah, we um, have an example, right? Maybe yeah. I can bring this up to show people like a snippet how, how this looks like this NAS yeah. access log. Oh, sure. um, Is it not visible? Is it visible uh, now? Yeah. I can see it, yes. yes. So you, you can see different columns, and these, these are columns that are coming straight out of the, the software agents that records the, the access to the files. And you see uh, the, the, the column name paths. This is basically the path to the file. Uh, and the next column, this is object. In fact, this is the name of the file, basically. And the, the, uh, the, 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 the three last column you have event operation uh, access or added and the, la and the next column is file open uh, here there are only file open or file created you can also have directory uh, opened and the last uh, it, it makes the, 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 the work a little bit more complicated is event count and this software agent is not recording every atomic uh, access but is is recording every access each second so maybe during the 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 one of the la the, the the not the last line but the, but the last before you can see they were uh, 30 event counts it means they were 35 uh, 30 file op uh, files opened in the same second uh, and, uh, and and things like this. So it's not the exact uh, data that you want. It's not the atomic data that you want. Is is there is some aggregation, uh, and uh, but we can also make some sense of it. And in this case, it was basically a work made by uh, 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 master students that I was uh, coaching for for the, the uh, her master thesis, and uh, as. You you just her to make experiment. I mean that uh, just do different things like put a word file on the NAS and uh, see what is recorded uh, with the software agent by putting a, a, a file on the NAS or just open all the file in the directory for example and see what is written by the software agent something like this. So, so she made a few experiments and she gets the the, the records out with the software agents and, uh, um, and she can make uh, a, a slight transformation of the, the data out of the records agents to give the data a more human meaningful. I mean that when you have typically when you have uh, 30 files open at this, the same second, in fact, it means that you have opened a directory and you have opened all the files in the directory or you are searching a content in the file it's, uh, it's the same if you search something in a directory it's it uh, it has this uh, this uh, atomic uh, step that is opening the file looking inside the file closing the file opening the file looking inside the file closing the files for all the files in the directory so you have to translate and uh, uh, from this information to a more human meaningful information it was not a, a difficult and uh, uh, my students was able to do it in a, in a few weeks of work the, the, just the time to make the experiment and to write the, the, the scripts for, the, for that and she, and she uh, frankly she was not uh, uh, a bad student but she was not used to, to write the scripts and she was just able to do it in a, in a few days so uh, uh, it's, it's something that you can do it uh, without problems and next you have enough data and you can try to uh, 
to have a very meaningful information from the, 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 the actions that is opening, closing a file, creating a file, deleting a file, the same with a directory. Uh, you have a few variations with the the sequence of activities that depends of the of the um, uh, of the software used. For example, uh, a word that does, uh, doesn't let the same trace that uh, Photoshop, for example, uh, or different software. Uh, there are slight variations. Uh, but you can also identify which uh, software is in, in charge of the basic action of the NAS because usually you know the extension of the file. Dot, uh, dot, uh, docx for words, dot, uh, PSD for Photoshop. Like this. Uh, so we have all this information and, and from that we can now build a process that is just the flow of the files from one people to the other people. For example, and this gives you a lot of information of the way people are working. And uh, in, the, in the in the first study we did this way, it was on the people from the opera. And uh, the aha moment there was that when we 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 look to them, we can see that they were accessing the same files in some kind of batches. I mean that in one month everybody was accessing. Uh, the same files, more or less, and uh, the next month, uh, basically, the set of files was was changed and things like this. And when we spoke with people about that facts, they, they they tell us, well, okay, it makes sense because every month we change the show, so every month we access different and files for a different show maybe a different contracts or maybe uh, maybe the, the the words for the songs or uh, i don't know uh, or the plan the, the map the, the design for the uh, for the for the classes or thing, or thing like this so um, uh, this was uh, the haha moment that we can understood that basically they have a kind of a rhythm inside the opera that is uh, organized around the show and uh, uh, this helped for the business process uh, analysis because we can say you have to take care first that you have these natural rhythms in your in your uh, in your process. They, they have one rhythm that is uh, around the show and the second rhythm is around the year. Every year they change everything, so uh, they have to, these two kind of uh, of uh, analysis or, or, or rhythms. I want to say or cycles, if you want. And uh, from that. Uh, we can uh, help them and give them counsel and uh, and uh, indication how to uh, basically they wanted to reorganize the the files on their NAS basically they, and we can say so to reorganize the the files on your NAS is that take care that you have these different cycles typical cycles and it will help everybody and it it really helped them to to reorganize their their information this way. So this was a uh, first thing. We did the same analysis, exactly the same analysis to another service. It was not the, the Opera, it was another service. It was more administrative-like. Uh, but we knew that the service was built uh, uh, with uh, f uh, four different uh, business activities, very different business activities. It happens that in this service, they were medical doctors that have to to look for the health of the employee, and they were some uh, political secretaries, if you want, that uh, that they have to uh, um, uh, to make report for the for the the, the political leader of the organizations. And uh, of course, the the files that the medical doctors uh, used and. Uh, uh, and uh, have not to be shared with the files of, of the political side of the people. So what was important for them was to check that they are not uh, migration of the information from the medical doctors to the political side and back, things like this. And they, again, looking to the access of the file with the same data file that we have seen there, we were able to check and to ascertain that there were no migration. And maybe we can see the, the, the results here, is the results. So this is not Opera, eh? this is another service. But you can see that basically the activities here are people. So this is the file, uh, they are transiting between people. And you can see there are basically the these three different teams 
Uh, team one is the team around the political stuff, and team four is a team of the medical doctors. And uh, medical doctors who have basically two people. And you can see there is no exchange of files between these uh, these two teams. Basically, they are they are. May, uh, I, I don't see clearly on this on this slide. There were a few files that were exchanged, but we could check that these files were uh, administrative files, typically like uh, for reimbursement of uh, some uh, so, uh, some expenses, basic expenses, not not uh, things that have to be t be kept confidential to medical doctors or confidential to the the political sides. And uh, so this is a compliance analysis. I means that we were with uh, with this tool, we were able to to ascertain that there were uh, no problem to, to of migration of the of the information. And uh, but uh, basically, we started with the same data as the upper case. It is just the access written by the software agent, uh, the access of the files on the NAS system. Yeah. So. Yes, exactly. I think that's a really, really nice example that I don't think many people would think about, right? If you don't have data, if you don't have an information system supporting the process, so looking at the actual file access, how files are created, accessed, and so on, and um, analyzing that, I think is a mm -hmm. yeah, it's an interesting idea. Maybe some some people can can try as well. And I think the tip of creating a document and looking how it's reflected in the log that's a kind of kind of a way of learning about how the data is structured that's being recorded that you can also follow here. And one thing that I remember that you uh, once said that I, I like very much is that when you're looking for data, the one thing is to look for data, uh, any data, right? But to be able to have data that is suitable for process mining, you need to have these three key elements, right? You need a case ID, an activity name, and a timestamp. But the way you put it is essentially um, yeah, you, you're looking for sequences of stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. So in this case, the stuff or the sequences of stuff are sequences of people. In the first example, it was sequences of circulation of files. So yeah, that's kind of a, maybe a, yeah. a mindset people can keep yeah. in mind. Yeah, the, the, in a sense, it's a pity that you say that we are doing process mining. We, we could say that we are doing second of stuff mining. Maybe uh, maybe uh, it would help people to, to broaden a little bit their view of uh, where are the data. So yeah. it, it, it makes sense. But uh, 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 as soon as, as you are used to this kind of thinking, you see data in, in everywhere, I think. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the possibilities are unlimited, in fact. Yeah, this, exactly. Um uh, when we were thinking, uh, we were uh, preparing this uh, interview, uh, and uh, I, I was telling you about another source of data, uh, but I have no example to show, but it was about uh, the, the debate of the local parliaments. Yes, yeah. the third example. Yes, please yeah. tell us about it. Yes, the, the, this, is, this is also, a, 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 maybe I would say, a crazy idea that I'm pursuing. And uh, I, I started uh, two years ago, but uh, unfortunately, I changed the computer and for a while. Uh, I cannot recover the data. But basically, the, the idea is that in the, in the local parliament, you have people that are uh, just debating on subjects. And uh, you have people from one party that is starting the discussion and uh, another people for another party that is uh, continuing the discussion, maybe co uh, giving a counter-argument, something like this, and back and forth and things like this. And uh, uh, if the parliament is a little bit um, well equipped with, uh, with data, it's recorded. So you just have to record which people speak when, when, the, when they spoke and uh, on which subject. And, uh, and you just record that. And it's very easy to do that. Uh, here, here I was thinking about that. You can see, you just have to fill this column. Who, when, what. Uh, uh, and that, that's, that's really easy. You, you can do it by hand, put it in the Excel file, and you have enough data to start a process mining. And here in that case of the, the, the local parliament, the, what was interesting, uh, the, the guy that... Uh, that drove me to the to this study was interested to know if women and men have the same amount of time to speak, and uh, so uh, he, he recorded he, he recorded himself. I mean, he, he was a guy of the local parliament. He, he did it by hand first. He just recorded the same way I, I show you on the the sheet of paper. Uh, who speak when on what subject? 
and uh, who he can derive, uh, of course, the person, the political party and uh, the gender of the people. Uh, the when is just the when, the time stands, and the what is just the, the, the case ID, if you want, the, the subject uh, they, they were speaking on. And uh, he, he, could started, he started to have some statistic on this, and I, I tell him, but I can go one step further, I can see if there are some patterns Maybe uh, maybe you have uh, uh, a typical pattern from the left to the right, right to the left. You can expect it, but maybe there is some uh, spurious pattern, left, right, uh, woman to man, man to woman, things like this, or uh, old people to new people, and things like this. And you, when you have this data and you can you start uh, looking at this, you can see the the these debates on the parliament, these discussions on the parliament with another uh, viewpoint. And uh, uh, you uh, at Fluxicon, you have did the hard part, you have made the algorithm and a useful tool. And we we have the fun. We just record the data uh, and we put the data inside the disco and uh, let's go and let's see. And, so, and it was really fun to look at this. Uh, I, I will probably continue this, uh, this endeavor. Uh, when I have some time, but uh, at least uh, again, you you look to a situation, you look to a, a special business. Here, uh, this is a political business, but anyway, this is a business, and uh, you gain inside inside the business in the, in a way that will be difficult in a, to to get the same kind of uh, of quality of information. So you, you, uh, again, this is another example. You can see that uh, you can uh, you have data anywhere and. Uh, uh, it's very easy to get this uh, this information. Yeah. Yes, maybe there's two two tips uh, indeed we can take away from this is that yeah how you how you look at the the data right seeing processes everywhere the sequences of stuff so what is the stuff even a, um, a debate in the in the parliament uh, can be viewed as a process by seeing the people or the parties or yeah whatever you want to focus on is the stuff that's being put in the sequence but also if you don't have any data at all um yeah the the, the nas log before was a uh, an example still to get some data or to still use some kind of existing data but if you really don't have any data at all it's almost always possible at least for a limited amount of time to manually record data mm -hmm. in an in an in an excel sheet for example Yeah. And what you have to make sure is that you really keep track of the case ID um, so that you can yeah, coordinate the different events to the right case, right? In this case, the topic you said uh, was the case in the, in the parliament debate. And then you can have even multiple fields for different types of stuff that you analyze in the sequence. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for most processes, it's not something that you can do for a very long time, but for a little bit of a short time, you can absolutely manually collect data this way and then analyze it with process mining afterwards. So that's that's the route people can, yeah. can take. And, and this, is, this is a good first step to, to start it manually because uh, uh, of course you cannot do it for a long time, but uh, the same as I said in the beginning, just by putting your hand in the data, you learn a lot, you, you, uh, you learn a lot of your data, of your process, and things like this. So um, th th this is a classical thing in, in analysis when you really have to do the things and not just wait to, to things happen, but you have to, to look for the data and things like this. Uh, you are confronted to, to difficulties, to real difficulties that help you to, to, to make a better project. And if after, let's say, you have recorded uh, a debate in a parliament for one or two hours, to have enough data, something like this. Uh, you, you analyze it and you say, oh, it could be interesting. It, it, it helps you to, to give you arguments to make something more automatic to, to, to record the data, for example. And, yeah. uh, it, it, it's, again, it's a, a step, gradual step to have a deeper analysis. Yeah. Uh, like with the free text uh, mining in the beginning, exactly. yeah. doing some first steps to learn more about it. Hmm. Yeah, so I, yeah. I hope this gives you all some ideas about yeah, how we can approach finding data, making data suitable, although it has data quality problems. And yeah, otherwise creating some data where there maybe isn't any at the moment. Um, 
Well, we, before we close the session, Leonard, I wanted to come back just briefly also to the topic we discussed a little bit in the beginning, like um, when you, how you have put people at ease, right? So you, for example, you mentioned um, that in your practice, you use an ethical charter where very clearly is defined what the goal of the analysis is. And um, people are actually really encouraged to sign it, right? It's like a, like a little contract for the analysis. And in fact, you uh, were so kind to contribute this ethical charter to To the process mining book so uh, we include it as an example in the in the process mining book so people can um, see an example how an ethical charter looks like and can maybe use this as a starting point to to make your own and um, yeah so together with the recording and the other links we will also share the link to this ethical charter uh, so in yeah in this whole range of um, or this whole topic area let's say of making putting people at ease um is there is there anything else maybe that you want to yeah to give people on their way that you find is really important in working with process mining in specifically in this kind of um, human interaction between the analyst and the people who are being interviewed analyzed um that yeah people shouldn't forget that you want to let them know uh th this is a state of mind maybe you uh, Please put yourself in the state of mind of the people that you are interviewing. Uh, they, they don't know you, and uh, and uh, you are a little you are uh, investigative. You are you are looking to their little secret. I won't say so. It's they are not in a, a easy way. So uh, it it makes sense, and it's a very a good profit for you to take time. To, to have here, this is uh, the process mining coffee. To to have coffees with people, just to to chat for for anybody and uh, uh, to make to be uh, to make people every people relax. This, this is uh, this is really important. You are not losing your time to lose time to have a coffee with people in this uh, in this business. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one thing. Uh, another thing, so you uh, you can be inspired also by other people that are doing the same kind of. Thing. Things in their uh, professional life. I, I'm thinking maybe you can think of a psychiatrist, for example. The psychiatrist uh, has to 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 to, to let uh, her patients to 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 tell profoundly about uh, his uh, anxiety or his uh, internal life. I would say psychological life. So these people knows know a lot how to to let people speak and help people speak. So uh, you can be inspired by uh, how psychiatrists uh, make their 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 their, uh, their business. Also, you have uh, other people that are very good to to let people speak. Uh, let's uh, let's speak about, for example police officials when they are investigating a crime or something like this uh, uh, they, they, they have to make these people uh, uh, speak and uh, they, they cannot just uh, ask straight uh, are you the the the, the bad fellow it, uh, it makes no sense they will go nowhere but they have to 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 collect little chunks of data and so they are very good to collect little chunks Uh, every time I, I've spoken with uh, one police official, the, the chief police officer of the city of Lausanne, about that. And uh, uh, on his side, he was very interested in process mining because he, he, he told me that uh, more and more uh, in this police investigation, they are using a lot uh, of information coming from typically uh, phone calls or uh, access to files. Uh, uh, this so this is quite classical process mining this uh, between the phone calls uh, and things like this but also he, 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 he learned me that uh, 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 don't do not be too straight with the people but just let people speak and just collect I, I say atomic facts uh, really these these facts that uh, uh, that they are the more element mental and uh, uh, when you are in front of people you have to let the, the speaking flows between between you and uh, and the other people mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you have to this is a, a maybe even a psychiatrist point of view you have not to judge the people in front of you you have to let the people tell them their truths their, yeah. their, their inner feelings and things like this and these are good uh, um, uh, state of mind for, for, for this kind of job and uh, so you can be really 
uh, inspired by speaking with a psychiatrist, uh, a priest also. Priests uh, are good to let people speak about their life, their spiritual life. Uh, police officials, uh, I don't know. Uh, there are a lot of people that uh, their main job is let people speak. In. Let people speak. So, uh, yeah. um, uh, so process mining is, is really funny. When we start to, to do some process mining, you, you, you are really touching a lot of different... Uh, Topics and uh, it's, it's not just algorithms. And uh, algorithms are fine, very very fun. Uh, sometimes difficult to explain. Try to explain the uh, the algorithms of uh, of uh, somebody that is not uh, computer people. It's not easy. But uh, uh, beside that, you have also uh, a lot of different things to 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 think about and to to speak and and uh, I, I would I want also to say to people that are listening to us uh, now. Don't be afraid that you have not to master everything uh, perfectly from the first day you are doing process mining. D this will this will be f uh, things and stuff and techniques that we, that you will learn by practicing. So just go and practice. <laughs> yes, very very good words um, to yeah to to encourage people to yeah to get started and not to expect too much and. Um, Like you've heard also in this session, work iteratively, and I think also the the advice you gave just at the end, how to work with people, it's it's really very very important and very relevant. And like you said, process mining is the tool is such a small part. It's in practice there are a lot of practical topics around it, and yeah, I think also here today people appreciate you sharing this experience with them. Also in the chat, for example, Neil uh, thanks you for. Uh, this practical experience and that it was very helpful in finding new ideas and also Anna says thanks uh, for sharing so yes uh, it's also my turn to thank you very much for joining us here uh, in the Prosmani Cafe today um, um, thank you all for, for tuning in um, the next time we won't be in just the dedicated Prosmani Cafe but I can give you the viewers here in this uh, today's Prosmani Cafe a little preview and Uh, reveal the secret that the post mining camp will take place again in the first week of June. So we will actually see each other uh, on 31st of May um, for the post mining camp as the next um, here in this channel as the, as the next time. So um, yeah, thanks again everyone for joining today. Thanks again Leonard and um, see you next time. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.